All right, yo, it's going to run Yarks here. Welcome back to another Beastorm Simulator video. And in this one, I'll be discussing mistakes and just overall things that people make inside of Beastworm. So a lot of these mistakes stop you from progressing as fast as you can inside of Beastworm. So if you're in early game, mid game, or end game, doesn't matter. This video will help you out. So make sure you watch till the end. This video is packed with useful information that will definitely help you progress faster. Yeah, so like I just said, it's for early, mid game, and end game. So it doesn't matter what stage of the game you're in, this will help you. But yeah, let's just get right into the video. So the number one mistake I see people making inside of Beastworm is they choose a hive color way too early. If you don't know what a hive color is, there are three different hive colors inside of Beastworm. There are red hives, there are white hives, and there are blue hives. And as you can see, I'm a blue hive. The way you decide your hive color is based off of passives. So passives are something you get from the Supreme Star Amulet and the Diamond Amulet. Yeah, so if I generate a double passive, as you can see, you get two passives right here. So I got Popsaw. Popstar is only used for blue hives, and that is why I have Pop Star Shower on my amulet. You also have Gummy Star, which is mainly used for white hives. And then you have Scorching Star, which is only used for red hives. So all of these passives are good for each hive color because they work together with your bees, amulets, your tool, etc. Pretty much every single bee in my hive, they work together to get me trillions and quadrillions of honey. This is why I have over one quadrillion honey lifetime. So hopefully I explained hive colors in the most simple way possible, and let me explain why I should not choose a hive color early on. A lot of people want to choose a hive color when they have 30, 35 bees, and the reason you should not do that is because you do not yet have the Supreme Star Amulet. The SSA can be unlocked by getting 40 different gifted bee types, and even though it might seem hard, it's definitely worth the long grind. But until you can get a single passive or a double passive, you should not choose a hive color. The kind of hive I would keep while you do not have the SSA is a mixed hive. And by mixed hive, I mean keep at least one of every single gifted bee. I do not recommend you have dupes and some other bees that you might want to have. Mythic bees, obviously keep those in your hive. But the legendaries that you might want to keep are the music bees. Have at least three music bees. Have three to four baby bees. I'd say have like three if you have the bear bee. And also as many carps as you can fit in your hive. Carpenters are good because they give you pollen marks. And these honey and pollen marks, they can work together with the rest of your hive to get you like pollen multipliers up to 2.5, if I'm not wrong. So yeah, that's Beastworm Hive Colors 101. Another mistake is people leveling up their hive wrong. So levels in Beastworm are incredibly important. It is the only reason people can make like over 20 quadrillion like Elo and all these other players. And no matter what stage of the game you're in, a decently level hived and a properly leveled hive is very important, if not the most important thing you should focus on. So what I like to say about hive, I cannot give you an exact level that you should have for an amount of bees, but it should be pretty noticeable when you have an underleveled hive and an overleveled hive because you might be making less honey than you want to. You might not be able to afford a tool or a backpack or like some other gear. And that is probably because of an underleveled hive. You might not be able to afford a backpack or a tool or some like gear, like shoulders. And, and if you notice that, it might be because of an underleveled hive. And leveling up your hive with some honey that you have been saving might fix that issue for you. And I like to think of leveling up a hive as an investment. You'll make that honey back much faster if you level up a hive. So don't be shy, spend all your honey on levels. Not all your honey, but a decent amount of your honey should be spent on leveling up your hive. The next mistake I'll be talking about is bees hatching. Hatching bees with eggs and using royal jelly on different bees is the only way you can get different bee types, and bee types are the thing that you have to strive for in Bee Swarm. Does that mean you should have one of every single bee in your hive? No. Does it also mean that there are different ways of getting these bees? Yes. So one way is, like I just mentioned, hatching eggs. You can get eggs from doing quests. You can get them from just finding them around the map. One mistake I see a lot with people hatching bees is they waste the royal jelly on the wrong things. Two bees that you should not really be wasting a lot of space on are the brave bee and the rage bee. Having two to three rage bees might be useful, but no more than two or three. Same with the brave bee. I'd, I'd only really have it in my hive if you have it gifted. Other than that, it's kind of useless. And bomb bees, they're also debatable. I guess they're good for getting pollen for quests early on. But other than that, I do not see a significant use for them. And same goes with eggs. The biggest mistake people make with eggs is they waste their diamond eggs on their hive early on. If you get a diamond egg from the black bear or you, or you find it under the 30 bee star area right here. You didn't know there's a diamond egg under the map right here. You can see it right there. You just gotta glide down to it. 
But the reason you do not want to use it on your hive, you might be wondering, why would I use it on my hive? I have a 5% chance of getting a mythic or a 95% chance of getting a legendary. Well, first of all, the chance of you getting mythic is very low, 5% actually, if you couldn't read. Second of all, legendary bees are incredibly easy to get. It's a 1 in 33 chance to get it from Royal Jelly, so it's pretty freaking easy to get. And third of all, Diamond Egg- Diamond Mask requires Diamond Eggs right here. You need 5 Diamond Eggs to get the Diamond Mask. You can easily get the Diamond Mask for free, free to play, without spending Robux on Diamond Eggs right here. But if you choose to waste them on your Hive, you might need to either 1, spend the extra time getting it from Mob Drops or just Sprouts, stuff like that. Overall painful stuff to do. Or if you save your eggs, you can easily get Diamond Mask whenever you can afford it with Honey, uh, Blue Extracts, like Glitter, stuff like that. So you don't have to worry about Diamond Eggs. Same goes with the gold eggs. Gold eggs are a bit harder to get. The only free ways you can get them are from the Black Bear, his 10th quest, I think, from memory matches around the map, and from the ticket tent. At least you can buy gold eggs with tickets like this. But that is why I would once again recommend you save your gold eggs, because the chance of you getting something rare like a mythic bee or a diamond bee from it are very slim. And even if you do get it, like, they're so easy to get with Royal Jelly, so just save it, you know? The next thing that I have to talk about is boosting as early, mid-game, and even end-game. A lot of early and mid-game players want to boost for, like, billions of honey, and they do not know why when they do boost, they make, like, 30 million or 50 million honey, unlike the pro players who make, like, 50 trillion. I'd say the five biggest reasons for people not making as much as they want while boosting is 1. Bee levels. 2. Amount of bees. 3. Amount of gifted bees, 4. The gear that you have equipped, and 5, and the most significant reason, is your passives. A passive, like I mentioned in the start of the video, is something you can get from the Supreme Star Amulet. So in order to make a bunch of honey from boosting with your passive in your hive, you need an optimized hive and an optimized passive and amulet. So since I'm a blue hive, I have pop star shower and pop star, it's the blue passive. The reason I need pop star and this exact hive is because bubbles grow my pop star. You can get bubbles from tadpoles, that's why I have six of them. I have blue pollen and white pollen on my ant amulet. I have diamond mask equipped because it is the blue mask and it's good for blue hives. Yeah, pretty much everything else, it's optimized for Blue Hive. And that is why you need to learn how to get a proper Hive first. And before you learn about how to boost properly, I would recommend you actually learn about like passives and stuff. And until you, and until you get a Supreme Star Amulet, you shouldn't worry about getting trillions of honey because it's pretty much impossible at low levels. But there is still boosting at lower levels. Maybe you won't make 20 trillion honey per boost like the endgame players. So the way you want to boost slash grind instead of Bee Swarm is you want to get yourself like a field booster like i just got the white one for times three dandelion you can also get the red one for like any of the three red fields you can also get the blue one for any of the three blue fields so i just got the red one and i got mushroom what i like to do next is i would like to donate a ticket to the one shrine you don't have the 35 berry unlocked then don't worry about this step you can still grind with the field boosters it's much better than grinding without but if you do have the one trying to donate, literally like anything, like one ticket for example. It's very easy to get. And look at all these ones I got. So these ones, if you look, they give you 34% instant conversion and 45% spider field conversion. Instant conversion is very important, especially in red hive and white hive. The reason it's important is because instant conversion means instead of filling up in your backpack, uh, you are getting that pollen to your honey amount instead. So look, I'm making like 100,000 honey. This could be- this number could vary from like 10 million honey per second to 100 million honey per second, depending if I have my passive or not. And there goes the star shower. Look, for example, I'm making 1 million honey per second. It is because of instant conversion. You see all those yellow numbers on screen? That's instant conversion. So instead of that- so instead of that pollen going to my backpack, it's going to my honey. So moral of the story, instant conversion equals very good. Next mistake I will talk about is the order of which you buy your items in. So let me just say this, until you get all the porcelain tools in the top shop, like the beekeeper's boots, beekeeper's mask, mondo belt bag, porcelain dipper, and a porcelain porta hive, but after you acquire all of those porcelain tools and items, start looking at this list. So this list was made by someone on Reddit, and I find it to be very useful and very accurate. First of all, you want to buy the top shop gear, then the honey mask, then the honeycomb belt, then the petal wand, the crimson and cobalt guards, gummy mask, coconut cancer, Donate your second spear petal to the Windshrine, Coconut Clogs, Supreme Side Trader, Demon and Diamond Mask, Bubble and Fire Mask, Petal Wand, and Petal Belt, and Gummy Boots, and a new tool. And one of the three new tools. 
The reason you want to get in that order is because it's optimized to save you as much time as possible. Some people prefer to buy the bubble and fire mask right after they buy themselves the honey mask, but I find that to be extremely wasteful of resources in honey just because on early stages of the game it's very hard to get those resources and you really don't want to waste them on a mask that's not going to help you that much. Honey mask is pretty much- honey mask is very good for passive grinding and so is the gummy mask. And if you didn't know, the honey mask stacks up with the gummy mask to get you even more pollen and honey. Honey mask has a passive called scatter and it drops a bunch of honey tokens on the floor and that passive carries on to the, the, the gummy mask. So don't waste your resources on the bubble and fire mask and instead just save them for something like the diamond and demon mask, the cobalt guards, coconut cancer, co coconut clogs. So hopefully this list does help you out. Unfortunately, I didn't have this list to guide me, but I did learn myself, you know. I acquired this hive without this list, and I believe you can get something similar as well. So this video should have highlighted a lot of mistakes that newer and later game players end up making. So hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you drop a like and subscribe with post notices on. And tell me in the comments, is there something I missed, or is there something that I do not understand from an endgame perspective, but maybe an early or mid-game player understands? Tell me in the comments, I'd love to hear from you guys. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.